Discs here, and I'm uh, maybe we can turn the, the, the treble down a little bit. Is that this one? Some reverb. How about some reverb? All right. All right. Hello. Yeah. Okay. Where is he? I can't even see him. <laughs> oh dear. He's behind the TV. I can't um, see him either. There he is. There he is. Okay, we got the disc swap here. Let me give you a little background about what's going on. Uh, about two years ago, oh, turn off that reverb. Come on. <laughs> about uh, two years ago, I did my, uh, I got off of Warner Brothers. I delivered my last record to them, and I said, well, what do I do now? It's been such a long time since I got into business. The rules have changed a little bit, you know, like, what is it? Take up fishing, it says, okay? Well, that, w that was a viable option, but not the one I selected. I decided to sort of integrate the stuff that I've been doing with computers uh, uh, in with my music and come up with this new concept called interactive music. Pass it on. That's why you can call me TRI now. I is for interactive. Um, the difference between an interactive CD and a regular CD is that it, when you put the regular CD in the player, it's going to sound the same every time you turn it on. But with this one, now in this uh, CDI player, uh, the CD can listen to you, can adapt itself to your uh, preferences, and invent a new album on the fly. So uh, we're going to see how that works. But first I'm going to explain one thing. This term interactive, interactivity, you're going to hear it a lot, and everybody throws it around. Everybody has a different idea what it means, but basically, it's not one thing. It's a whole range of things. You have to still be able to listen to the music in a passive way, like us oldsters do, you know. And uh, then again, there are some uh, some kids in the crowd here. I'm sure, like Nintendo, is the only meaning for interactivity, as far as they're concerned. And this particular thing supports the entire range. You can do nothing, or you can do everything. And I'm going to demonstrate how to do nothing right now. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, the disc is uh, loading now into the machine. Uh, it's going to load a little graphics there and some computer software and stuff. And then when it gets some sound, it's going to start playing it. Of course, you recognize that if you've heard the CD before. Yeah. And, if you don't, yeah. and if you don't do anything else, it's going to act just like the regular CD. It's going to play the album just the way you would hear it on the non-interactive CD. Except when it gets to the end, it's going to go right back to the beginning and play it again. But then you might start diddling with the buttons, as I'm about to do. Here we started going through the events in, re in reverse order. We can also go to a part of the song and just kind of stop there as if the record is skipping and it'll play, except it'll do it in a musical place. It'll keep playing the same piece of music over and over again, like this. As you can hear, it's kind of like a record skipping, except that you can't really hear where it skipped. Now, this is going to enable me to show you some other things that you can do. Let's go down here to mix. Can you turn this mic down a little bit? Or else... I'm hoping I didn't get our hair and rotate that speaker in the room, but maybe... That's better. No charge. Um, that's fine. 
uh, you can go and tell it, tell the record what kind of mix you want to hear. And uh, I'm gonna tighten up our range of selection here, what we call slack, and we'll listen to a uh, to a thick mix. Let's see what that sounds like. Sparse version of that sounds like. So, then again, there is the ever popular karaoke effect. You can listen to the whole record without the benefit of my pesky voice. Oh. Uh, you know, you have a little sing along or write your own dirty lyrics or something. Oh, yeah. um, another thing that you can do is you can affect the mood of the music. <coughs> so I'm going to. Uh... Bless me, dreaming of colors, dreaming of sounds, dreaming of things that can't be wrote down. Slipping away so no one will miss me. Waiting for angels to kiss me and bless me. Dreaming of colors, dreaming of sounds. So it substituted a piece of music that has a little bit more thoughtful quality about it. But I want to go beyond thoughtful. I want to get really eatable. <laughs> So essentially, it's picked out a piece of music to substitute that's the tempo that you want. And you can do combinations of any of these things. Uh, of course, you may not be able to find a sad, fast song. In which case, you'll probably just get a fast song. A personal little swarm of gnats to fly around your head. Yeah. Or me. Uh, another thing we have here is... Uh, Online interactive help. In case you get lost. <laughs> this is the interactive music help system. Press the option button and to exit. Welcome to Epcot Center. <laughs> Display the flavors of the music that you can adjust. As you move the highlight up and down the column, the settings for the selected flavor appear in the editor in the center of the screen. Miss Shandy Cinema, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Now, if you get some uh, settings that you like, you know, you get like your party settings or your uh, dinner music or whatever, you can go over here to the credits page and we have a series of radio buttons and you can save those settings into, uh, into one of those locations and then recall it later with the press of the button. And I talked about that continuum of interactivity, you know, us passive types, or sometimes passive, sometimes active, and then, you know, there's the uh, Game Boys who want to jack this around constantly. So what we have here is called, uh, we have a thing called real-time mode, and what you can do is uh, connect the sets of buttons up to the jo little joystick directly like this. I'm going to put the vertical movement connected to the uh, top set of buttons. Here, uh, and I'm not sure whether uh, we want to waste the time since we have so many people here, but I'll answer a couple questions real quick. And then we'll get on to the signifying portion of the program. How much does it cost, Todd? How much does what cost? The disc or the player? The player. Oh. The player, uh, I've heard a lot of a whole range of prices depending where you get it, who you get it from. I've heard anywhere from around $500 to $700. Um, 4 dollars through the Nexus, I believe. Yeah. Uh, the disc is going to retail for $24.99, so it'll be like 20 bucks or something. Yeah. Right here. That question was, what influence does this have on creating the music? It's a, it's a somewhat different process than... Uh, <laughs> it's a somewhat different process than than normal, but it's not radically different. The, the most different part is writing it, because you suddenly realize that different parts of the songs are gonna be rearranged, like 
uh, verses might come not come in the same order that you originally wrote them, so you got to be aware of that when you're doing it. <laughs> uh, the question was, will there be a CD-ROM version? And there may, if we can find a CD-ROM platform where the sound is good enough. Uh, the reason why we're doing CDI is because it has sound that is comparable to a regular CD, but also allows us to compress a lot more onto the disc and to uh, and to display all of this uh, control stuff too. Oh, hey, it's gonna be me. We're giving stuff away. Before we commence, we have there. There's a uh, giveaway, big giveaway here, um, which I guess is the entire catalog of the, the pre TRI. <laughs> The uh, Utopia and NAS and everything, the entire thing. We have many, many entries here, and we're going to announce the winner right now. The name is Philip D'Angelo the Third. He left. He He left. Philip, are you here? Well, he's got his address, and I guess the you know, entry is an entry. So, okay, Philip D'Angelo, pass it on. Congratulations, Philip. Okay, let the signing commence.